Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Dora, I'm the organizer of this group um, and I'm checking in with everyone today. So uh, if you're new to this group, I come here, uh, come on here live every Tuesday at around 9 a.m. Pacific time to, you know, to check in, to connect if you're around, if you have any questions that you might have sent through to me during the week, this is um, a time where I can answer them for you. Um, but otherwise, um, usually I focus on a topic of the week, a theme of the week, um, and give you a little bit of training or coaching around that area. Um, so today I want to talk about feelings and emotions. And so, as you know, this group was uh, created with the intention to help uh, women and mothers to find ways to relieve their stress, right? Or manage their stress. And I find that with uh, most of the, the people that I work with, their main sources uh, of stress comes from, um, they're internally generated, they're our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings. And so this is one thing that I find most of us uh, struggle with. So, okay, so I have my notes with me because I tend to, <laughs> I can tend to go off and, and start talking about all sorts of things. So um, I'm trying to keep these trainings at, at around 20 minutes uh, so that it doesn't go super long. So have my notes with me to keep me on track. Anyway, so, um, and, and you might have heard me, heard me talk about this before. And especially if you were with me, um, last week for our summit we uh, many speakers also touch on the topic about how we've been conditioned to uh, to to feel certain things to express ourselves in a certain way um, to behave a certain way to react a certain way so all of these things are kind of automatic we've learned them through our childhood and even programming can happen while we're in you uh you know uh, during gestation, like in utero, or some of these conditionings can be passed down to us even before we were conceived. <clears throat> so, yes, it can be, uh, it can get uh, quite complex if we wanted to think about it, but we don't have to analyze everything. And in fact, I think that it is our tendency to try to think our way through all our problems that are causing our suffering because there are certain things that we can't solve with just our thinking minds alone. <clears throat> and us um, as a society have really shifted towards focusing on our um, intellect, our intelligence and, and really putting priority and um, weight on on our intellect and so we begin to feel that everything can be solved by linear thinking by by rationalizing and we have and then we we run into issues when we can't or we don't know how to control our emotions because we feel like we have to control everything for us to feel safe and so <clears throat> this kind of leads us to the situation where we feel like we're overwhelmed, we're exhausted, we don't know, um, or we're even fearful and we are anxious about what we might feel because we feel as though that's not something that we have control over and and um, and, and we, we just, we have not learned the skills um, or, or ways to, to deal with and process our emotions. <clears throat> so, so now what we're faced with is that we are trying to rationalize our way or solve problems we, uh, as we would intellectually for problems that live in our bodies. <clears throat> so, um, so in doing so, we are not addressing the issue. Um, or we are trying to address it in the uh, not in the right way, not in a way that's going to be helpful to us. And in doing so, we are continuing uh, with perpetuating the suffering that we feel. Now, 
<clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. So I'm coming to you. Uh, I mean, I'm talking to you about emotions and feelings and things like that as a spiritual teacher informed by the teachings and philosophy of yoga and in particularly um, integrative restoration yoga nidra <clears throat> so from the yogic teachings we learn that we can't just simply push our emotions away and we can't suppress them we can't repress them we can't just ignore them and think that you know we've dealt with them we don't have to uh, or, or thinking that we don't have to deal with them that we've kind of put them away and we're we're safe we're in a place where uh, we are not feeling these uncomfortable or painful emotions. But unfortunately, it is this very resistance that causes the suffering because even though you think you might have been successful at suppressing or ignoring certain emotions, they're never gone. They're always there and they need to be processed for you to really be able to be free of them. And so everything you know all the moving or impermanent objects all go through the five stages of birth growth stability or maintenance and then decay and death so our emotions our thoughts our feelings also go through the uh, uh, these five stages and so they come up to us they express themselves, but eventually they will finish their cycle and they will dissolve and disappear. Now, what happens is that when we're not allowing them to come through, we're not able to acknowledge them and allow them to move through their natural process or cycle. They're not able to, you know, decay and die or, or dissolve back into awareness. Instead, we're keeping them stuck. And when we do that, we continue to keep them or, or hold on to them in our bodies, but they don't just stay there. They actually get louder and louder because they haven't completed their process and they, they're trying to complete their process. And so they become louder and louder, wanting to be heard and acknowledged so that they can complete their cycle. Eventually, like I said, you know, there are now these emotions that perhaps if we dealt with them much earlier, uh, would have been um, <clears throat> uh, less intense, I guess. Eventually, they're going to build up to much bigger emotions such that we can't ignore them anymore. And when we get to that stage, you know, we might feel overwhelmed, right? We might feel like it's out of control because the, the emotions have gotten so big that we, we don't even know what to do with them. And the only um, possibility for us in that moment is to just react, right? We may become fearful and anxious of all the emotions that we're holding on to because, again, this feeling of being out of control. And so this keeps us in the fight or flight mode, <clears throat> constantly battling our emotions and all of this stress really are internally created so even if there is an external stress that triggered this we kind of continue with it on our own even when the trigger is is no longer there right <clears throat> so when we get stuck when we have feelings or emotions that we don't want to feel and we try to resist them and what we're really doing is we're thinking or we we have already made up our minds about there are certain emotions that I like to feel and they're okay to show up <clears throat> and then there are certain emotions that I don't want to feel because they make me feel uncomfortable they make me feel um, nervous or I, I might feel pain when I when I allow these emotions to come up <clears throat> so in your mind you've already created what's okay to feel and what isn't okay to feel right and so in doing so you are um, saying in a way to yourself that there are certain parts of me that are okay and there are certain parts of me that are not okay and in doing so you're not fully able to accept and love yourself for who you are and you know 
I'm, I'm already feeling myself, my mind going everywhere because there's so much we can talk about here. So I'm going to just bring it back and, and let's focus, Dora. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we want to eventually get to a place where instead of trying to think of um, our emotions as good or bad, or this is something I want and this is something I don't want, um, or this is a, a um, an emotion that's my friend, or these are enemies and they're out to hurt me or get me, and like start removing some of these conceptual labels around the emotions or feelings or even thoughts and beliefs that we have that show up in our lives. And instead, think of them as messengers. They're here to give us a message. They're not here to try to hurt us. They're not here. Their intention is not to make us feel bad, but the way that they're showing up, they're causing certain sensations and, and um, feelings within our bodies, right? But the intention is not to hurt you. Now, so then, understanding this, what can we do um, or what can we do to start cultivating um, a different way or having a different relationship with our feelings and emotions that would be more helpful? Well, like I said, firstly, instead of resisting, um, we want to try to welcome and acknowledge whatever is showing up as the messenger. So not labeling whether something is good or bad, right or wrong, but just seeing them as they are, as information. When we take this approach, we will be able to take a step back a little bit and be able to observe our feelings and emotions um, as a witness so that you begin to understand that you are not just that emotion alone. So for instance, you are not sadness, you are not anger, you are not shame or guilt. But what you are is a being that can experience sadness, anger, shame, guilt, or whatever else that arises. So once you're able to discern the difference between yourself and your emotions, then we can explore a little bit further as to what what messages these feelings or emotions are trying to bring to you. Now, but having said this, before we even inquire into our emotions, what we want to uh, start practicing really, especially if you're a beginner, is to be aware of what's arising in our bodies, right? We, we need to be aware because our emotions are expressed through our bodies. We're going to feel our emotions in our bodies. And so we need to be aware and be in touch with our bodies, right? We need to learn to communicate and to listen to our bodies again and not wait for things to get really intense for us to take notice, but to start to be more and more sensitive such that we are in tune or, or we, we are tuned with to our bodies and the subtle signals that, that are coming through. So a couple of weeks ago, um, I did a mini training in this group about the mind-body connection and why it's important. So definitely you can go back to that video if you want to learn a little bit more about um, ways to connect with our bodies. And if you were in our summit last week, we actually talked quite a bit about mind-body connection and different ways of getting in touch. So if you don't already have a mind-body practice, you know, I recommend you not jumping ahead of yourself and start engaging with your emotions and because that could get overwhelming. What we really need is to set a, a firm foundation from which we can build on. And so what I would suggest, um, even for, for people who do have a mind-body practice, this is something that you want to continue to uh, include in your life, um, are practices such as, you know, yoga, tai chi, qigong, meditation, connecting with nature. There are many ways that we can start to bring um, these the mind-body practices into our day. And the really, the you know, what we're trying to achieve here is to get back in touch with the sensation of our bodies. What are we feeling? Because a lot of the times we actually don't know how we're feeling. Like we know when there's a big 
you know, sensations such as pain, or maybe I have a tummy ache or I have, um, or, or something's really cold and you feel really cold or, or you feel really hot. Like, you know, these are the big obvious sensations that we're feeling. But when we are not particularly uncomfortable or not, you know, some, somewhere in between, somewhere more subtle, we tend to feel like, oh, I don't feel anything, right? But that's actually not true. Like a lot is happening. A lot of information is coming through. There are, you have the capacity to sense sensations even when so that nothing is happening. Like you don't have to feel bad for you to feel a sensation in the body or vice versa. You don't have to feel extreme excitement and joy to feel something. You know, that those are the obvious sensations because they've gotten so big that you, you have to take note of them. But what if we come back to when we're feeling more neutral, what kind of sensations are you feeling then? And this is what, you know, all of these mind body practices are doing is bringing, helping you to bring that your attention back into your body and help you to get more sensitive to all the subtle signals that are coming through. And so um, all of these practices actually bring you back into the present because the, in the present is where you are, it, when you are actually experiencing your body. You can't think about it. You can't experience your body in the past or in the future. You're always experiencing your body in the present, right? Even if you have a memory of the past and you're reliving that memory, the experience or sensations that you are feeling in relation to that past memory is still in the present. You're feeling it presently in the body. So all of these practices really it is about practicing being present with yourself. Now, um, so the practice that I teach is IRES Yoga Nidra or Integrative Restoration Yoga Nidra. And I know that a lot of people struggle with meditation. They think it's not for me. I, I can't do it. I can't sit still. I can't get thoughts out of my head. Well, if you are one of these people who have tried meditation before, but feel like you just cannot sit for a meditation, yoga nidra or IRS yoga nidra could be something that you might want to explore because this is one of the most accessible meditation for beginners. There's no prerequisites. You don't need to have any experience. And it's not about trying to be a certain way or get rid of certain thoughts. It's really, it's a very permissive practice. Anything and everything is okay. And it's really about that observation of what's happening in your body. And so there may be even moments where you feel like I'm so, my mind is so busy, I cannot switch off. That's okay. You know, you don't have to. So there's a misconception about, you know, um, when you meditate that you, you have to feel Zen, you have to be relaxed, you have to be a certain way. Um, that's not true. And so um, I rest meditation really is about helping you to connect with yourself and really be okay with whatever that shows up in that moment. And so if you are interested um, in learning more about I rest meditation, um, I will be doing weekly sanghas actually. So um, I'm trialing this, see, seeing how they go. Um, every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, um, we'll come together as a community through a Zoom call. Um, these are gonna be drop-in classes, donation base, and we'll just come in to talk a little bit about um, the teachings of, um, of Yoga Nidra, um, I'll give you a short practice, and it's really going to be very uh, loosely struck it, stru structured. So um, it's a chance for you to bring in questions, um, ask about how certain practices may apply to you, and how it might be helpful and how to integrate these uh, tips and tools into your life through the teachings of um, your yoga or integrative restoration yoga nidra. So I will. Uh, put more information and send you the link um, or add the link at the the bottom um, once I'm done with this call <clears throat> but um, but yeah so getting back in touch with your bodies you know whether it be meditation whether it be yoga or um, other other activities but starting there really cultivating a practice and then in doing so 
um, you're going to start to set this foundation from which you can build on. And throughout the weeks, you know, we'll continue to talk about this. But, um, but for now, yes, um, getting back in touch with your body is, is such a key thing that you can do for yourself. And these practices don't have to be very long either. You know, if you can just do uh, one minute or a few breaths where you can just be really um, present with yourself and do this throughout the day right um so little but often really does the trick and that's something that i recommend all my clients do is not about sitting down for one big or one long meditation practice every day um it's it's really about how can we bring that practice into your daily life you know i love those long practices and i definitely recommend you taking time if you can to, to do the longer sitting practices but you know we're all busy right and i think it's more important that uh that we do this um little bit often rather than trying to strive for that one hour or half an hour meditation every day and feeling like you can never make time for it and therefore not doing it um in the end okay so that's it from me if you have any questions definitely uh send them my way comment below about what you think maybe what you're struggling with what you might um perhaps some of the challenges that you have in in connecting with your bodies let me know your thoughts and i will see you all next week tuesday at 9 a 9 a.m pacific time have a great week everyone take care now